Hey, hey, how's it going, everybody? This is uh, Dave with d &E Performance. This is um, tutorial number one on the turbo tuning with your 6014 LS box. Um, I am going to cut this into two videos, so there will be an additional video. Um, There'll be an additional video um, to this video, so there'll be a one and two. Um, I think we're gonna start off with just some uh, basic information as far as uh, carburetor you'll need, and then uh, we're also gonna get into a little bit of um, map sensor readings and you know some of the other things that come along with uh, what you'll probably need to do is, or some of the knowledge you'll need to know uh, when using the uh, turbo maps or the um, or your KPA map on this um, on the 6014 box uh, go ahead and just kinda open open the screen up um, we'll probably get into we'll probably let's let's probably start off with uh, what what kind of carburetor you're, you're gonna need um, you're going to uh, you're gonna need a blow-through carburetor um, there's no uh, real real way around it um, you're gonna you can't take you can't take a, a normal carburetor and try to push air or boost through it it's not gonna work um, there's a lot of different uh, aspects to the carburetor that a normal carburetor has that just don't work um, under boost pressure uh, there's a lot of internal parts that need to be modified um, I'm not really going to get into what you need to do as far as mod modifying your carburetor. Uh, I will leave a link in the description box for uh, Hangar 18 mods. Um, so for people like myself, I'm probably going to go this route as soon as I uh, I boost my application. I'm like I said, I'm not going to get into you know how to modify your carburetor or anything like that uh, this is um, just solely based on the basics of setting up a, uh, a KPA map and uh, this first tutor this first tutorial is just going to be um, the theory behind the uh, map sensor and and kind of what the map sensor does and how and what it reads um, so, uh, like I said, I'll leave a description for the Hangar 18 mods, or I'm sorry, I'll leave a link in the description for the Hangar 18 mods, and you can kind of go through there. Um, that and, uh, <clears throat> if you don't want to mess with the uh, Hangar 18 mods, there's a bunch of other companies out there that, uh, like CSU and, uh, uh, I think the other one is uh, AED. AED. I think they do blow through carburetors. Uh, Demon does blow through carburetors. I know I've got. I think I've got one on my site too. Um, that's usually the easiest route to go as far as you know, just buying something that's already set up for blow through. Um, and, you know, just bolt it on and, and go. Um, I mean, not really going to bolt it on. And go. You probably have to do a little bit of tuning, but as far as not having to modify the carburetor that's gonna probably be the easiest easiest way to go it's a little bit more expensive to do it that way but um, it's just the uh, fastest route and it's uh, it'll get it get you up and running pretty pretty quick but um anyway so we're gonna go ahead uh, and talk about um, the map sensor uh, and its functions um there's so much information on the map sensor so what i have decided to do 
is uh, just read uh, a couple of paragraphs out of this tuning book that will and it's kind of lays out um, just kind of the basic fundamentals of what a uh, map sensor does okay so um, map sensor and its uh, functions We're go I'm gonna go ahead and read out of this uh, tuning book here and um, uh, this this tuning book's pretty good it's an older version but it um, just lays out the uh, basic fundamental principles <clears throat> of how a map sensor works so um, we'll go ahead and get started here uh, the map Man what MAP stands for is Manifold Absolute Pressure. This is the amount of vacuum or boost inside the manifold at any given time. The sensor uses absolute pressure because this type of reading will always be consistent and will never be affected by changing atmospheric conditions like a normal gauge, uh, normal gauge pressure does. Normal atmospheric pressure is rated in units of pounds per square inch or PSI. The pressure at sea level is 14.7. As the altitude changes, so does the density of air. An increase in altitude produces a decrease in air density and a corresponding decrease in the measurement of pressure. It is also worth mentioning that as altitude increases, the temperature of air decreases in direct proportion. The altitude, the air's altitude, pressure, density, and temperature are all related. And a change in any one of these factors affects all the others. If we have a tire gauge and we connect it to a tire that reads 32 psi we can say that the tire <clears throat> is filled to a pressure of 32 psi this number is referred to as gauge pressure the absolute pressure that is actually that actually exists inside the tire would be the absolute pressure plus the gauge pressure so if we measure the tire's absolute pressure at sea level, the tire would have an absolute pressure of 14.7 plus 32 equaling 46.7 psi of absolute pressure. It is important that we only use absolute pressure when dealing with calibrating our ECU or in this case our 6014 MSD box. That way when the vehicle is operating in di different geographical locations or areas at different altitudes and air densities, the calibration of any given manifold pressure will remain the same. Again, it is important to remember here that the density of any quantity of air is directly related to its absolute pressure. The higher the pressure, the dense, the denser the air will be for any given volume. This is easily recognized in engines that are supercharged or turbocharged. The more boost you have to pressurize the engine with, the more total airflow it will use and thus the more power it makes. It will help here to also understand that nearly all automotive computers measure absolute pressure in metric units of bars or KPA meaning kilopascals. The reason for doing this is because when the absolute pressure inside the engine is less than zero, it is operating in vacuum. When discussing amounts of vacuum, we typically use terms like inches of mercury. 
and when we talk about positive pressure or boost in an engine, we use pounds per square inch or PSI. It can be very tricky and time consuming to convert these units to make them so something, sorry, something easy to understand. Instead, we use metric units of kilopascals. A pressure of 14.7 psi is considered to be one atmospheric pressure or 100 kilopascals. One kilopascal represents I'm sorry, one kPa represents a thousand kilopascals. Also a pressure of 14.5 psi is equal to one bar. So the two terms are very, clo very closely related in actual measurements and are often used in place of each other. A bar of boost which indicates a manifold pressure of roughly 14.5 5 PSA, PSI gauge pressure or 25.2 PSI absolute pressure at sea level. These measurements are also the same as having 200 kilopascals of manifold pressure. We refer, when referring to automotive ECUs we typically use only use measurements of KPA. So, <clears throat> you just got to remember when um, using your, uh, your Google um, conversion um, table to make sure that when you convert uh, when you're converting, let's say we'll type in 120 here, uh, you got to make sure that you're going to minus, you're going to get 17.4 at 120 kilopascal. So we'll go over here to my calculator. And um, you just got to remember that. the gauge pressure <clears throat> you just gotta remember that the gauge pressure and absolute pressure are two different uh, two different readings and on your um, Google uh, calculator just make sure that it's gonna give you four it's always gonna start off at, at 14.7 which is zero absolute pressure so you just got to make sure to, to minus that 14.7 uh, off of anything past 100 kilopascal or kpa in this case so when trying to figure out your map um, you're going to want to make sure that um, wherever you're setting your map up uh, just refer to uh, uh, 14 point five or fourteen point seven as being zero and, and um, it, it's it's pretty it's pretty straightforward and pretty easy to understand um, once you understand it I'm um, again um, going going back and what I said in the past um, make sure that you do your research there's plenty of research on this subject I mean I can only tell you so much here um, so as far as um, setting up our map, uh, our turbo map, and, and understanding uh, the principles of the map sensor, um, I can keep going on, but uh, the basic principle is uh, is laid out in, in, in the first two paragraphs of this, and anybody can go ahead and, and, and do their research. And the terms that you'll be researching will be uh, manifold, manifold absolute pressure and gauge pressure. So just knowing 
the difference between those two terms uh, is going to help you out greatly uh, when when using your uh, your KPA map on your 6014 box. So I am going to go ahead and cut this video, and uh, I will move on to um, uh, tutorial number two. Um, again, this is Dave with uh, Genie Performance. And hit like or, like or subscribe. Um, I'm going to leave those links for the uh, Hangar 18 mods in the description, and uh, and also a couple other links. Uh, one to my website. Uh, again, my website's an affiliate website, so anything that is purchased off the website helps me fund these tutorial videos. <clears throat> and product reviews. Um, I greatly appreciate it. And again, this is D Dave with DNA Performance, and thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you.